It says, Reggie owns three acres of a beautiful wooded land. When Reggie decides to move to be closer to his grandchildren, he donates the land to the state with the understanding the land will be used as a state park. All right? The state park is large enough that it's not congested. This becomes important, this word congestion. It's an example of a good that is. If it's not congested, it means my consumption does not prevent you from consuming the park. All right? And so the answer is neither rival in consumption nor excludable. In other words, parks generally aren't excludable. This is only three acres. And an example right down the street here is Gramercy Park. Parks can be excludable if you build enough fences around them and charge people to get in or have keys or something like that. But generally we consider you know, national forests and stuff like that hard to keep people out. All right? And the beauty of them is they tend not to be congested. So I can go in and enjoy the forest and you can go in and enjoy the forest. We don't have to see each other because it's large enough. It's not congested. But if it's congested, for example, if there are picnic tables and there's only a hundred picnic tables, and once those are you know, being occupied, I can't go in and have a picnic table anymore. So in that sense, the park does become congested. Even though it's not excludable, it becomes rival in consumption in the sense that not everyone can have a picnic table at the same time and therefore it becomes what we call a common resource. All right, so the answer to number two is B. Let me go to number three. Under which of the following scenarios would, would a park be considered a common resource? Okay, common resource now should go into your head. One, it is not excludable, but two, it is rival in consumption, meaning you consume the park or some aspect of the park, I can't have access to that access or that, that particular aspect of the park. So the answer to number three, did your questions, is D, visitors can enter the park free of charge, so it's not excludable, but frequently all the picnic tables are in use. That makes it rival in consumption, and therefore that park becomes a common resource as opposed to a public good. Now, that park would be a public good if there are so many picnic tables that we all could have one, all right? So therefore it's free entrance, therefore it's not excludable, and two, we're not rival in consumption in the sense that we can all have a picnic table and my having one doesn't prevent you from having one. That would make the park a public good in this particular case. Here we're saying no, it's saying, it says, again, look at the question, a common resource here is when there is rival in consumption, so there's only so few picnic tables, and therefore, again, you're consuming it, prevents me from having one. Answer to number three is D. Let's go to number four. It says, consider a public road that anyone is allowed to drive on. Public road, anyone can drive on. So basically, it's not excludable, all right? If the road is often congested, the road would be considered, again, the notion is congestion. Congestion implies that you driving on this road without traffic, by having everybody on the road at the same time, it prevents you from driving at the speed you'd want, it prevents you from getting to where you want to as fast as you'd like to, etc. Because of those restrictions, because of that tension of, of, by, by people trying to consume it simultaneously, which they cannot, a congested highway is a common resource. If it's not congested, you can just get on the road, there's no traffic, then it becomes a public good. One, because it's not excludable, you can just drive onto the road. And two, if there's no traffic or congestion so that you move freely and therefore your consumption of this service, this highway service, is not being affected by someone else's consumption of that highway service. So the answer to four would be C, it's a common resource. All right, we're moving right along here. I'm gonna do one more and then we'll take a break, okay? It says, which of the following is an example of a government intervention to solve a tragedy of the commons problem? Now, the tragedy of the commons came from this very old story in which in England or in the US, in the Pilgrim's times, for example, they, the town hall had around it a public park that people used to graze their, their livestock on. All right? So everybody would bring their livestock to graze in this public green, this area, this common area, a place in Boston called the Boston Common. And they would, you know, their, their herd or whatever, their cattle would take all the grass. But clearly, my eating that, my cattle eating that grass prevents your cattle from eating that grass. So we called it the tragedy of the commons because everybody had an incentive to go and quickly get their cattle on the thing and consume it. By everyone doing that, because we didn't exclude anybody, they depleted, they depleted, excuse me, they depleted this resource and therefore 
we destroyed the we destroyed it. Okay, and essentially that's what we think we're doing with the oceans. We have overfishing by these major countries like Japan who have these fleets of fish, I mean fishing boats that come in. They are factories all in one. They are off 12 miles of our coast and they are just basically scooping up huge amounts of fish. There may be fish that they're not supposed to catch or whatever, or baby fish that should be spawning or growing, and everything gets sucked in and they use what they can. Actually, the boats have canning facilities right on them, so they do the canning cleaning everything they are just floating factories and the fear is we are completely completely depleting our fishery resources in our desperate need to kind of get protein um, as clearly many countries have that need so the oceans are another modern day example of what we call the tragedy of the commons not excludable but rival in consumption because that country, Japan's consumption, prevents other countries like Russia or the U.S. or England, whatever, from consuming potentially. So what's the incentive? Everybody gets their boats out there. Everybody tries to get the fish before they're gone. And pretty soon we accelerate the depletion of the oceans and the fish. So how do you kind of manage this? Well, that's what we've talked about in class. And I think your next question is going to get to that. So let me take a short break here, and we will come back.